Good evening and welcome to the Online Warriors podcast. Got a very special episode for you guys this week. Um, got a surprise guest star that will be uh, coming in the second half of the episode. I don't know. Was I supposed to say that right away or was it supposed to be like a surprise surprise? No, I think it's fine. Yeah, I, I, I think people should... We have to warn people and give them some time to, to adjust and dip their toes into the podcast water before we start splashing them. Um, so yeah, we have special guests later. Uh, we're going to talk, run through some news topics here, of course. Uh, we're going to talk about um, some video games being involved in next year's Summer Olympics. We're going to talk about um, some big Pokemon news that a lot of you have probably heard about. Uh, and of course, we're going to talk about this new kooky-looking uh, Paul Rudd trailer uh, for the Netflix show Living With Yourself. Um, but first, uh, we do have kind of an exciting announcement and actually I'm, I'm cutting out. I've, I've just, I didn't even introduce you guys. I just blew right past it. Uh, give it up for Nerd Bomber, everyone. Hello, everybody. I'm going to give, I'm going to pause for applause because I said, give it up for you. In the- Woo! Live audience applause. Look at them go. And then we'll do like an applause meter situation. So we'll see who's more popular. Uh, Clap if you like Tectic more. Hi. <laughs> Seems uh, inconclusive it's at this okay. point. We'll do we'll do a poll on Twitter. We <laughs> that sounds like a really good idea. Um, as long as I illegal eighty six am not involved. Oh, you're I don't you're like going popularity to be involved. contests. You are going. I tend to, to lose popularity contests, so I I'd, I'd, I'd rather not be. But I also I don't run the main Twitter, so I guess I'm I probably don't have a choice in the matter. Um, anyways, the big news that I was going to just jump right into without introducing you guys is, uh, we hit a thousand followers on Twitter. This is huge. Uh, so first of all, thank you to all who have followed us. Uh, we really appreciate you. We hope you're liking our content and liking, uh, the podcast itself. Uh, second of all, we have a little bit of a treat, um, for our social media followers and for the details, I'm going to swing it over to the nerd bomber. Yeah, so we have a special tweet out there. We'll, we will be giving away a $10 Amazon gift card. If you'd like to enter in for a chance to win that gift card, all you have to do is follow us on Twitter at OnlineWarriors1 and then simply retweet the tweet announcing the giveaway. And then we will be announcing the winner on October 2nd. So for those that don't know, uh, Amazon.com is this website where you can go and buy stuff and they'll ship it to you usually in like two days and literally you can buy anything you can buy absolutely i mean that yeah that is really the first thing i should have said if you can think of anything if you can dream it you can buy it that should be amazon's logo like they have everything um you should pitch I just that tried... to them i really like that that slogan it's a good one yeah if you i mean it's but it's true in my experience but i will say i just recently i don't want to get into like personal story time but tried to buy uh a jersey for a football jersey for my new fur baby uh and they didn't have the right size in stock so i guess they may not be what dreams are made of i don't know i'll i'll talk to their corporate people and try and get a slogan worked out but um i also need to talk to whoever's running my fantasy movie league uh because i missed this week uh we're gonna start uh at the top of the episode today with our fantasy movie league update um and yes, I did uh, miss setting my lineup again. For, well, it's the first time this season, but it's it's the, the like, first time in a really time long time, time. I think. Like I know, uh, yeah, I've... we're like four seasons in now, right? And I don't think you've forgotten since like season two. It's been a really long time. You were on a roll. I yeah, I had a good streak of, of diligence, and then I just went ahead and, and screwed that up. Um, so of course, I came in last. Um, two of my screens weren't even full. Um, I had a. Uh, 16 million actually this is interesting uh shout out to spitfire 32 uh they had a cineplex that had three empty screens and they still managed to beat both me and tactic so that's pretty impressive i feel like um starting from the top though we do have to give a shout out to our patreon producer mr ben checkness who uh managed to bring home the cool win with 63 and a half million um played a lot of that gerard butler movie which still apparently is making people a lot of money i don't know why but um in second place we have mecha yoda at 59 8 secret asian man uh, i think this is his 
best week so far, uh, 58 and a half million. Devin Reed at number four with 54 and change. Uh, Hackett's Tech with 53 and change. Nerd Bomber down in six. What happened? I don't know. I had a rough week. I thought that um, I could just rely on hustlers and then play up the Peanut Butter Falcon because, I don't know, people were saying really good things about it, but apparently the general movie scene public did not agree with me. A lot of people uh, played Hustlers, it looks like. Uh, I did hear that the Goldfinch was very bad, which sucks, because I was very excited for it. Yeah, I thought it was going to do um, well. Got very bad reviews. I don't know how it did in the box office. But well, I heard the book anyways. was very polarizing. I have the book. I haven't read it yet. It was one of those things that I purchased for the beach and then never got into, but I heard the book itself was really polarizing, so I wouldn't be surprised if the movie is, too. Well, so I'm an Ansel Elgort guy, so I was like... I was really into the idea of the movie, but yeah, I, I heard it's not that good. Anyways, uh, Spitfire in four, in uh, eighth place with 49, and like I said, Tectic just barely got beat by Spitfire, 49, and I am way down at, at 16 and a half, hey, so that's not great. The overall is what I'm what I'm hoping kind of stays fast, because at least even though I've been losing, the box office overall has been relatively low numbers. So That is... Without a doubt, true. Um, in terms of the overall, Nerd Bomber stays in first place, with 389. Devin Reed in second at three, just about 370. Tactic in third with 355 and a half. Hipster Pop Geek at four with 345. Mecha Yoda at five with 344. Spitfire at number six with 330. And I am at seven with 312. Uh, our, our good friend Ben at. Uh, just around 300 Hecate's tech with 282 and secret asian man with 137 so i think i dropped a couple spots in the uh in the overall um i wouldn't be surprised if that were the case uh, i deserve it but um if you do want to join us uh at the fantasy movie league there's still time to get in on this season and on, in on the next um and if you want to do that you can head over to fantasymovieleague.com search for our league which is called online warriors podcast and it is a private league, but the password to enter is podcast all lowercase. So go check it out. It's really fun, even when you don't set your lineup uh, like I occasionally do. So um, we're going to have a, a bit of an, uh, an abbreviated first two news topics to make way for uh, for our guest and also for uh, the bigger, arguably the bigger news topic. But uh, we should talk about uh, this earth shattering Pokemon news, um, which is that Ash has finally become a Pokemon master. Um, for those who didn't hear, he uh, became champion of the Alola League. Is that how you pronounce it? Alolan League. Alola. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, there's there's this cool video that Tactics sent me that that shows the battle. Um, the English version of this has not yet aired. It, it's in a recent episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon, um, but you can check out the winning moment on YouTube and. Um, for a lot of people who are into Pokemon and who have watched the show, probably a very big moment. Uh, I did not know that the show was still on. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I watched the, I heard about this and I was at first confused by the news just because I didn't know what, I think I had showed up on like sports center. I didn't know what they were talking about. Um, yeah, the show's still yeah. been ongoing. I think it's one of the longest running cartoons or anime shows that have been going. I mean, man, I don't even remember. I think the first season came out in like the late nineties or something like that. Been running for 22 years. Yeah. Um, the one thing I will say is that I'm a little sad that the original voice actor and the original animation team did not get the glory of seeing Ash win a championship. Oh, I can't stand the current animation. Yeah. The current animation style isn't really isn't up my alley. I, I don't know. It, it looks a little weird and creepy. And maybe that's just because I'm so used to seeing Ash catch him one way. And then to see him as this completely new art style is just like jarring for me. Kind of like what uh, happened with the Crystal Dynamics Avengers game. Like when you're just used sure. to seeing a character as a certain face, seeing them as another face is just weird. Um, yeah, his face did change. Like I, I, I didn't even watch much of the show when i was a kid but i watched some of the show and i watched the movies and his face looks like totally different like i, I don't what did they i don't know what changes it, it looks more it looks less like anime, anime more it looks oh, less anime. anime in my opinion and more like cartoony little kitty anime like anime that. in my opinion has more harsh features sharp edges if i may Sh well yeah his, his older face definitely has more sharp edges in this one um 
I'm looking at a picture. I'm not just working from memory. I'm looking at a picture of his new face right now. Um, but the video that you sent me, of course, you know, it, it shows in this like montage style, uh, Ash losing all the other previous, I guess, championship battles. Um, so it's kind of a cool moment, you know, even, even as someone who is not the most invested Pokemon fan and has not been watching the show for a while, it brings you back to your childhood at the very least, and it, it's a very triumphant moment. So, um, so, so for I those mean, of you who haven't seen it, sorry to cut you off, because no, I just wanted to make sure they understood what happened. So he was down to his last Pokemon, Lycanroc, and it was not going well. He was getting beat up, but on the other side, the other guy was also on their last Pokemon, and it was this final blow to the gut. You thought it was over, and then... The Pokemon does a backflip, Lycanroc does a backflip, boom, game over. Even Ash was shocked that he won. He was kind of just like dumbfounded, and it didn't even hit him right away because he's so used to, well, this is it. I got far, but fail short. So way to go, Ash. It, Good for you. It it surprises me. I mean, again, the show's been on for how long? How many times has he gone to the final battle and lost? Like, it, I would have assumed that he had already won, which is another reason why when the news broke, I was I was confused i was like really this has never happened before in in the entire run he doesn't even always he's only gotten to the final battle and lost one other time other times he's placed in the top eight or the top 16 it's been it's been a wild ride for ash which is ironic too, that keeps things like, interesting when you consider that in like pokemon the first movie he beats mewtwo arguably the most powerful pokemon ever known to man he does he beat mewtwo though it, well I don't know. Not he doesn't I guess battle Mewtwo directly, but somehow encounters and resolves the conflict with Mewtwo. I mean, he's encountered so many legendary Pokémon and been held up as basically this trainer who is the connection between Pokémon and humans, and yet this is the first time they've actually let him win a championship. And by they, I mean like the animators and the the story runners. So, I don't know. I think it, it it's kind of touching, I guess. Uh, shows that after 22 years you can achieve your dreams if you set your mind to it and no setback is enough to stop you if you're determined to do it uh i don't know i'm excited i still wish the original voice actor could have been there to do it though she she actually like recorded a a touching message and that was kind of neat i like that i just uh, yeah i mean i'm still trying to wrap my head around like i feel like most shows you watch where there's a competition element the protagonist might not win the first time but like the second or the third like it you know it's i think that's very interesting from just from a storytelling perspective that um they would hold out on on fans for so long but i mean it probably kept people very invested and it kept things very interesting well his mo was wasn't always i got it well the song is to be the best that like no one ever was i get that but he was always <laughs> pokemon come first let me let me make sure to take care of them it's all about the bond and and if if he felt things were going too far he would never risk it all to win it was never it was never about that it was always about the the relationship so i could see it it, it kind of does jive with his character at least from a story storytelling perspective yeah he always so ended up giving up a lot to make sure that his friends and his pokemon were put first okay so he's he's forsaking victory for he's not selling out essentially is what is way you can read into that well i I mean even when he lets his most powerful pokemon go like i think one of the most iconic moments in the series for me is when he lets charizard leave because charizard doesn't really respect him as a trainer initially and then they work together and he earns charizard's respect but then charizard goes off with all the other charizard and he kind of just lets it happen because he respects his pokemon so even though it's like the most powerful one that he's got he's willing to sacrifice his training um ambitions to let his pokemon go be happy well there you have it um congratulations to ash big day for him big day for all pokemon fans um we'll see if he wins again i mean i don't know the show probably will be going on for the foreseeable forever i don't see why it would stop so um hopefully this is the first of many for him i'd like to see him, um, see him become a gym leader do you think that's a a reasonable possibility for the future yeah, probably it would be a good segue into a new youth like a new maybe not ash maybe his name will be stick or i don't know i couldn't think of a name 
It would be interesting to see if this ties into like the uh, the live action movies because I know um, after Detective Pikachu came out, they were talking about potentially making like an Ash, Brock, and Misty live action Pokemon movie. So I wonder if him winning in the show is like the path to him growing up potentially, and then moving on from the anime to the live action show. That would be really interesting. Potentially stupid question: Is Professor Oak is he still is he in the picture? Is he still around, or is that over? There's the Professor Oak, yeah. There's like different Professor Oaks depending on what region they're in. And then there's like people who aren't Professor Oak who take the mantle of Professor Oak. It really is dependent, but like Professor Oak is still around. So right now in the Aloan region, he has his Professor Oak cousin, which is like him, but more bro. So kind of like the, uh, the Nurse Joys and the Officer Jennies. If you're familiar with the show, like every town had a Nurse Joy and every town had an Officer Jenny. I'm getting too far into the the weeds knowing nothing about Pokemon, but I just wanted to say that I like I like Professor Oak based on my very, (laughs) very thin memory of Pokemon. So uh, I hope Professor Oak wins something. It's I don't know. Um, Congrats to Ash. That's 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 the main point I want to make here. Um, And congrats to, to Paul Rudd. Uh. So Paul Rudd is making bank. Uh, First of all, he was obviously in Avengers Endgame and, uh, you know, all the Ant-Man movies. Uh, He has made a couple of things for Netflix. Um, I've seen one movie that he made called The Fundamentals of Caring, um, which was like pretty good without getting into it. But uh, he just or Netflix just released a trailer for a a new show that he will be in. Uh, Oh, boy. What is it called? Living Uh, with yourself. yourself. So um, it looks like it's going to be. Uh, clone-based dark comedy um, in which Paul Rudd essentially tries to murder himself based on what, we, what we've what we seen. So um, for those that uh, that don't know, um, I actually watched the trailer and I, I did not know it was for a show. I thought it was for a movie. Um, it seems like it should work better for a movie than a show, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not sure how, what kind of longevity it will have. That That is, that's like maybe my main if I were to have critiques of it, I love Paul Rudd. I think he's perfect for it. I also love the way that they like differentiate the Paul Rudds in this trailer by just like messing one's hair up I think and glasses. That's fantastic. Yeah. And glasses. Yeah. Like they make one look more frumpy and presumably like the quote unquote replacement Paul Rudd, the one that's always happy. They make him look good all the time. So and I think that's just great. Me personally, I'm actually very excited to see this because for those of you who don't know, I'm an identical twin. And the way we differentiate ourselves is one of us has glasses and the other one doesn't wear glasses and the other one, and one of us is kind of frumpy and the other one is not. <laughs> well, <Wow. laughs> so wait, are you, are you the frumpy one? I mean, you, come on, you can tell us. I am no glasses, not frumpy. Wow. You pulled it off. Does your twin know that he is glasses and frumpy? He owns it though. Like he embraces it fully in, in like, it's not like a negative frumpy. It's like a... Like, this is me, kind of frumpy. I guess. So, so he does know. Does he listen to the show? Is he going to hear this? Uh, probably. Shout out to uh, Tectic's uh, frumpy twin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't frumpy know what to call glasses. Tech twin. There we go. Ooh, I like that. Um, yeah. Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to get him on here in a guest spot at some point. Um, for those that uh, have never seen the not that good movie Multiplicity, have you guys ever heard of this movie? Michael Keaton I like pizza. himself like four times. Hey, so you have seen this movie? Oh, yeah. It is absolutely absurd. And it is like the, fir- the first thing I thought of when I saw the trailer for this show was they're remaking Multiplicity without Michael Keaton and with Paul Rudd. Although Multiplicity was more of like a slapsticky kind of humor. This looks like it's going to be more, it's going to be more thinky. Like you're going to be like, it looks like a lot of it is about depression and how to deal with it and like possibly the cloning element could just be a narrative device to explore those themes um either way i'm i'm very into it uh looks fun at the very least it personally reminded me i don't know if you guys have read this novel it was one of the the best sci-fi novels that i think came out last year from an author called blake crouch and it was called dark matter and it was a little bit different in the sense that instead of clones um it was like multi-dimensional travel so that uh multiple instances of the same person ended up in the same reality and they were basically vying for the 
the life that they wanted because they each like there was only one instance of the wife and all that kind of stuff. It kind of had that right. kind of vibe to me where like it was kind of like witty, but also dark. And it seemed like there's going to be some action elements to it, too, because in the trailer, it seemed like they'd be fighting and somehow cohabitating. Like, I'm just very confused, I guess, how this is going to play out over a series. That's, well, just, that, that's my one critique. You just still. mentioned the plot to the one with Jet Li. Where there's all the different dimensions and everything like that. So, in short, it sounds like this has been done time and time again. <laughs> with, I was just going to say, there's different they're, they're, versions oh. and different spins on it. There are a lot of clone movies, like another, and I feel like I'm mentioning a lot of clone movies that I feel like are, are pretty bad. There's this uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called The Sixth Day, which if, if no one has seen it, uh, you're better off um, not having seen it. But essentially, Arnold Schwarzenegger gets cloned without his permission i guess and um and at the end like you're like following one of the arnold schwarzeneggers as he's like as he like tries to reclaim his life like you said there's only one wife and everything he's trying to reclaim his life from the other clone and then at the end you realize that he's the clone and it's like i don't know kind of like an emotional twist i guess so like, I'm, I'm wondering how like what elements from past clone stuff is going to come in and like how they're going to make it unique i so, legitimately sorry. thought you were going to say the movie twins with arnold schwarzenegger where he's twins well, with right, danny well, devito <laughs> yeah but that's not that's not a clone that's not clones that's just they're identical they you brothers? can't tell them apart uh, i mean yeah i've spitting uh spitting image i've actually never seen that movie but i've heard a lot about it um i don't know i mean i'm I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm all in for living with yourself, but, you know, it's it's an interesting enough concept. It's got Paul Rudd. Uh, I mean, it's on Netflix, so <laughs> you can binge it, which is, like, one of the most important things about Netflix as a streaming platform, I think. There's See, no I don't know, though, I, because there was a news segment. I don't remember if we covered it. It was either last week or the week before where Netflix is going to start dabbling in uh, weekly releases, kind of like some of the other major, major streaming services. Oh, which breaks they, my heart because I not. love to binge. So I hope this is a bingeable because otherwise I'll be sad. Uh, I'm, oh gosh. Yeah. So and it's funny you mentioned this. My girlfriend watches the Great British Baking Show and she mentioned that they, they only release one episode a week. And I thought she was wrong, but she's, she's right. I can, I'm reading the article about it right now. Um, I'm, this is dismaying. I do not like this. Yeah, Anyways. it's pretty sad. Not a fan. <laughs> that's that's a that's a different news topic potentially for another time. But um, check out "Living with Yourself" starring Paul Rudd, and I am googling when it's supposed to drop. Uh, October eighteenth, twenty nineteen. Um, so almost exactly a month from now. Actually, yes, exactly a month from now, you will be able to uh, watch the show if you're so inclined. So um, go check it out and um. We are going to take a quick ad break for uh, some ads <laughs> before we get into the second part of the show. And to talk about PodCoin, as always, I'm going to turn it over to the Nerd Bummer. Yeah, so this will be the last week that we'll be promoting PodCoin. Hashtag RIP PodCoin, if you guys haven't noticed. Uh, PodCoin announced that as of the 24th, which is next week, they will no longer be in existence. I guess the project just got out of hand, so they'll be shutting it down. In the meantime, you have one more week to earn your PodCoin. So if you download the app and you use your code, Online Warriors, you'll get 300 bonus PodCoin for the last week of the app. And for every minute that you listen, you'll get PodCoin to put towards gift cards or donate to charity it's a sad day but it was a great run while it lasted it was a great platform a lot of good donations to charity and we'll we will miss you podcoin r.i.p and um on that sad note we will turn it over uh to some of our podcast friends for hopefully a happier ad <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Chadley, and I am the number one host for the Movie Epidemic well, podcast. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, well, I'm, yes, I am the number one host. Uh, I, think I do, I'm have, I do have a co-host, Buck Hollywood yep. Leduc. Buck I think Hollywood Leduc, the co-host. I'm also the founder of the of the show. I think I'm kind of. I think I well, invented I mean, it. In, in, uh, you were there when I invented it in 2014. I definitely, for I sure. definitely came up with um, every definitely, idea. Definitely founded it. Uh, yeah, most of the ideas are mine. Of course, on our show every week we watch four new movies. There's a new episode out every single Sunday. Wow. We watch four movies, review them. Sometimes more, depending on sometimes how we're more. feeling. Sometimes uh, more. 
uh, we do three new movies as well as one movie from a franchise. Um, so if you guys want to check us out, we're on all of your uh, all of your podcast streams. Yeah, you got Spotify, Apple Music, Google Music. Just just Google it, you guys. I don't You'll know. find it. Podbean. We're on all of them. Yeah, figure it out. Thanks for type li- in movie epidemic. Yeah, check out my show. All right, welcome back uh, from that ad break. And uh, as we welcome uh, each other back, we're also welcoming a guest into the Online Warrior studio. There's, it's not a physical studio. We're actually a- all across the country here. But uh, we'd like to welcome our Patreon producer, Ben, into the studio and on the show. Hello, Ben. How are you? Hello. Doing well. Doing well. I was uh, waiting great for to a, have you here. I was waiting uh, for a grand AO entrance. Wait, who's supposed to do AO? Me or Ben? Ben, of course. Oh, He's okay. the enter. AO. There you go. There it is. I like it. There we have it. So, um, yeah, Ben, uh, he, uh, one of his uh, many privileges as a Patreon producer is he gets to join us on the show so uh he's here and, and we're going to keep on rolling with some of our news today and and get him in on some of the action so um one of the major news topics that uh just hit in the past week is uh esports is coming to the olympics so uh, for those of you who have not yet heard uh intel is sponsoring uh, essentially uh what they're calling the intel world open at the 2020 olympics in tokyo japan next year um, and they're going to be featuring two quite popular games uh, in tournament style, Rocket League and Street Fighter V. Um, and each of them has their own $250,000 prize pool. So essentially, it's going to work uh, very much like uh, the other Olympic sports do. There's going to be open qualifiers for a spot on each country's national team. And then the national squads will compete um, essentially to get up to the big show um, at the Olympics. So uh, th- there's kind of a lot to unpack here. Um, obviously, one thing that's really great is that esports are starting to make their way even further into the national and international conversations. But on top of that, uh, I kind of just want to get your guys' thoughts on uh, the choice of the two games. Um, because in the past, uh, actually in 2018 at the Winter Olympics, um, there was a similar competition that Intel also sponsored where StarCraft II was the game of choice, but um, apparently it was deemed not exciting enough, not accessible enough, so they moved now to Rocket League and Street Fighter V. And I know Nerd Bomber, uh, you are a Rocket League person, so you must be relatively excited. I think Rocket League is a perfect choice. Um, I've actually watched a lot of Rocket League tournaments online. They actually do a really good job. They have great production value and everything, and it's one of those esports that's super accessible because everyone can kind of understand soccer with rocket cars it's not a super difficult concept and there's not a whole lot of rules or anything it's pretty much anything goes try to get the ball in the net and it's really exciting because it's fast paced and you can do a lot of like cool aerial tricks that take a lot of skill and i think it's a really great choice i enjoy watching it i don't know have you guys ever watched rocket league or street fighter tournaments for rocket league for me i mean Olympic sports is all about intensity. And when I play Rocket League, I break a sweat. I, I know I have a problem, um, but it it's exciting. And and I, have too, have watched eSports of Rocket League. And I'm literally like, how the heck did they do that? And it's just, it's a perfect fit. Street Fighter, me. That's where I'm at with that one. So, Ben, what's your, uh, ex- first of all, do you have playing experience with either of these two games? And, and second of all, how do you feel about this? Okay. I've got, I've got thoughts. Um, so I have played, uh, a little bit of rocket league and if you ever want to make someone angry who, uh, who plays rocket league, call it soccer cars. But, (laughs) but anyway, um, I've played that before and I definitely am a fan of street fighter. Um, not so much on the watching the competition. I don't, I, you know, I don't watch that very often um one thought i have about about this is um is this so when they did uh, the one before was there a prize pool a, a, a monetary pool involved also because because that seems very odd for the olympics i would have to assume uh i actually don't have that information in front of me right now but i would imagine yes okay so i have it i do have it now that was one hundred and fifty thousand. Um, so yeah, similar situation. And that is a good point where, I mean, you know, in the Olympics, you know, kind of the prize is, you know, a gold medal or, you know, just international recognition. Um, so yeah, that is, that is a very interesting point. 
Um, I don't know. I mean, f- I, so I will say I've not played either of these two games. Uh, to me, Street Fighter, and and maybe this is just a uh, my inexperience with the game showing, but if I was going to choose a game to be on the Olympic stage, essentially, Street Fighter seems a little button mashy to me. That's exactly that, what I was thinking. Yeah. Is, is, is so like Ben? You said you have played Street Fighter in your experience. Yeah. Is it? Is there a button mashing element to it? Actually, you know, you um, I forget which video it is. If you look on YouTube, there they tried to um, pit someone who had no idea how to play Street Fighter against these experts, and um, he definitely was found out. I mean, it was like there there is a lot more, um, you know, strategy to to playing than than you think. So, so that's that's with any game, and I agree with you there. However, if you were to give two people a controller and say both had neither had any experience, and you said just go with each game, you could get through Street Fighter. It's it's got a certain level of intuition to play Rocket League. I think you would just effectively drive around in circles. To, to Ben's point, there's a lot that goes on with any kind of fighting game. Like, if you really get into it, each character has their own unique set of combos that you have to learn, and it's a lot harder than you oh, think yeah. it is. Oh, yeah. There's blocking, there's timing, there's range attacks, yeah. there's nearby attacks, there's, there's counters. There's Yeah, there's interrupts, there's things like that. I, so. I don't disagree with the, the fact that it has skill, but what I'm saying is the fact that you could fake it till you make it kind of more easily with that one i think more so it's just invisible skill because as you're watching it's very difficult unless you really are in tune with the game you don't know the difference between button mashing and knowing what you're doing if you're watching and you're not familiar with the game so i think trying to get like big audience exposure to it it's not as evident how much skill it takes for a fighting game which is sad in a way like i wish more people had exposure and knew about fighting games and how difficult they are it's a really good point i suck at them i still enjoy playing them but like i get my butt kicked online yeah i don't i mean i i I can definitely see that street fighter like i'm sure if i sat down like you said like this youtube video you're referring to if i sat down against someone who had been playing street fighter for years and was like yeah, I'll give this a shot. I'm sure they would absolutely wipe the floor with me. But Flawless. I just I, like like you even said like it's Street Fighter. It's not something that you uh, particularly enjoy watching. And I like you said, I just don't know how it would translate. And I don't know, you know, I don't I don't even know how big of an element that's going to be in this in this event. Like I don't know if they're going to televise it the same way as they're televising the Olympics. I would expect that they won't. But I mean, it would be public on some scale. I just don't know. Like Rocket League for me is actually a very similar experience where. I've only played Rocket League a handful of times. I think actually a couple of times I've played it with you, Nerd Bomber. And like you said, Tectic, it's mostly like by the time I was done playing a couple of games, all I had really accomplished was like, okay, I feel like I have a relatively better control of the car, but I certainly couldn't score in a way that looks purposeful. (laughs) So yeah, to me, like Rocket League inherently, when I, I think when I watched that, I have a better grip on how much skill is involved, but I don't know. I think it's, I, mean, I think it's, I think it's the fact it's similar to sport, right? It's, it's really similar ob, in a very obvious way to, to soccer. That's, I mean, right. and, and people, people know who know uh, generally the rules of that or hockey or something, they can kind of wrap their head around um, how that's exciting. Whereas with a fighting game, it's not, I mean, you watch boxing, but it's not not the same as that. You know, it's not the same kind of. I don't know. It just seems different. Yeah. Well, and 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 to kind of add to that, like, I think if I were to watch a like a soccer game, like I have watched the World Cup, and I watch that, and I'm like, man, I could never do that. You know. But then if I watch a boxing match, I'd be like, yeah, I could do that. And granted. I want to be perfectly clear. Really? I could do neither. I could do neither. But like, I'm saying Hold up, if wait, I... Wait, you think <laughs> no, that I, I, boxing is more in reach than soccer? <laughs> My goodness. Yes. yes, because I think boxing is like, I think a huge part of boxing is can you take a punch? It's not even can you punch well. It's can you stay upright and take a 
bunch of punches and i'm not, not i'm not talking about mma that's it looks extremely hard i could never do that but like boxing you're wearing these big pillowy gloves and oh they're just, not you're just, pillowy you have <laughs> obviously never boxed i've ne- i mean not on a professional level no but like i like f- r- f- soccer like you're run, you get tired so basically you're running what, around. You, what you have watched is a commercial for sock and boppers that's uh, what you've first watched. of all sock and boppers uh how dare you bring them into this they're amazing uh i mean, I, mean I, I don't know like i just to me when i watch the two sports side by side if you were to ask me which one i would i think i would be better at i might say boxing and i played soccer for like 15 years when i was a kid but have you ever been about... punched actually this, yeah, this punched. can go to everybody here have you ever been punched because my answer is no you've never been pun- like in your life no i've never been punched Oh, I've been I don't, punched. I don't make people angry. I hope. Me, me neither, but I I had brothers growing up. So like of course yeah. I was punched. Like yeah, like where punch? Is it like exclusively punched in the face? Okay, when you think of like a really bad boxing match, and by bad I mean probably entertaining, you always see them get like punched square in the face and they have the black eye and their tooth is loose and all that stuff. So have you ever been yeah, punched yeah. in the face? A good jaw punch, you're down. I've been punched in the jaw. Were you down? I was down. I didn't get knocked <laughs> out, but I was like, oh, ha. Ah. <laughs> I so, just kind of so, like my body, like my knees just gave, went down. And it was almost like a standing fetal position if I'm trying to, if describing what I did. I just wanted it to stop. I actually, on one of the secret segments for the show, uh, and if you, if you want to uh, listen to me dis- describe this incident, you can uh, subscribe to support us on Patreon, but... I actually got punched in the gut once, punched in the stomach, and I passed out. So I'm start, like, with th- keeping that in mind, I'm starting to go back on my, you know, I'd be better at boxing than soccer. Soccer sounds great. <laughs> soccer sounds much better to me. But um, I don't know, B- B- Ben, I, I'm sure it's a question you never thought you'd have to answer on the air, but have you ever been punched in the face? No. Yeah, so you're, you're better off. I think I think we're in a good place. Um, you and I are in a great club of people who have not been punched in the face. Hey, let me I'm just set the proud. record straight. The one time I was punched in the face, it was by a dear friend. So it's have not you like it was like. No, we were. Yeah, we were. I've got, I, we I've were, got an elbowed in the face. Ooh, that's all. But I mean, worse. not punched. Oh yeah, definitely. Like it's, basketball, that's. It's all bones. Yeah. We but had the bright I mean, idea but, that when we were kids, if you wrap T-shirts around your your fist, it cushions it, and and you can box and not feel anything. Uh, a T-shirt, a T-shirt is not cushion. So, so I, a couple of things I want to just clarify before we move on. Uh, one, I know people are going to be asking because you said a, a dear friend punched you. It was not me. Okay, I know people are going to be on the internet saying, "I bet it was illegal. I bet illegal punched him." No, I've never punched tactic. I don't plan on it. Two, have you guys patched things up, you and this dear friend? Are you guys good yeah, friends me, still? Yeah, me and Nerd Bomber are cool. <laughs> <laughs> it I was, was just not about to me. say that. <laughs> well, uh, we'll let the listeners decide. I mean, that that just seems like the fair thing to do at this point. So, yeah, I mean, I guess uh, in the Olympics, we'll be able to watch uh, Rocket League. We'll be able to watch Street Fighter. And um, we'll be able to take something away from that experience. And someone will be able to take away $250,000. So, uh, can- Kind of a tangential question, and this is where my mind goes, unfortunately. Have you ever heard the rumor that the Olympics are one big orgy? No. You've never heard that rumor? Because they all uh, are in the... Okay, never mind then. It's just, No, it's... I, I, think, I think Ben was about to say something that didn't involve orgies, so I'm going to go over to him. <laughs> ben. <laughs> yeah. Ben, save us. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it involved orgies, no. Um... No, I was I was going to say um just the whole money pool thing. I mean, it's it how how close to the Olympics is it? I mean, it, are the Olympics sponsoring this because that's kind of unprecedented to have monetary compensation for a a sport instead of something like a medal, you know? Yeah, I, and, and so that's so correct me if I'm wrong. I yeah, think ahead. that Intel is sponsoring it and that Intel the Olympics is, is just like lending their name 
and allowing them I, to be like loosely tied but it's not actually like part of the olympics it's just going to be happening like in the same place as the olympics and i think it's actually a couple days before the olympics actually kicks off but like i said i'm not 100 okay. percent sure i don't know when the olympics are exactly i can tell you this event is from july 22nd to 24th 2020 and it will be taking place in japan which is the host nation for the olympics and japan apparently automatically qualifies they're automatically going to be in the finals with seven other qualified teams so there's going to be eight teams in this thing so like uh you know japan and seven other countries but yeah i I, is that how it usually goes with olympic events well i mean i think every every country at least gets a chance to compete in olympic events i don't know if you get automatically in the finals i'm not sure well yeah i mean with like i think there's there's qualifying kind of they're qualifying sort of events i'm guessing right yeah so yeah so if you get eliminated as a country, you don't get to be televised or, or whatever. It's you know. I don't know. Like it, like Nerbomber was suggesting, it seems like the actual like Olympicness of this event may be a little bit tenuous. I mean, this article, which I have from Forbes.com, shout out to Forbes. Uh, I mean, it says Olympics all over it, and it's they're going to be using Olympic venues, and it's going to be either right before or during the Olympics. And, you know, it almost seems like Intel and the Olympics are partners, but Intel is the one that's sponsoring the actual event. Probably it's just almost like the Olympics. Esports legit. Yeah, I think the Olympics probably want, like, everyone can see the future that esports is just growing in popularity. So I wonder if this is the way for the Olympics to kind of dip their feet and see, like, how people react to it without actually committing yeah, to anything. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and and that's evidenced by the fact that they're also like they're moving away from Starcraft, which is like much more of a strategy game, maybe not as accessible in terms of watchability. And they're instead moving towards soccer cars. So, yeah, well, here's here's another thing that I thought of. It would be a shame if, uh, you know, chess is is um, has try, been trying to be in the Olympics for for a while now. And I think it's going to be an event and they're they're making a big push to to be accepted as an olympic event in 2024 it would really be a shame in my book if if uh, video games became an olympic event before something that has the history that chess does it's like thousands of years old yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and it's so, like known everywhere it's like a know. gentleman's game and this whole yeah and especially like chess used to have huge tournaments like they were publicly televised and everything like if you if you were a chess champion i'm pretty sure you had basically public fame for being good at chess so it is i'm like all for it being in the olympics and it is a little weird to me that it's not already yeah huh. well um 2020 is it's an olympic year and there's going to be a lot to watch if you like esports and if you like regular sports so uh check it out come july and um we're going to move away from the news now. We're going to move into our What Are You Up To Wednesday. We're going to, we're going to swing through uh, Tech Tech and Nerd Bomber and myself really quickly, and then we're going to be talking to Ben a little bit about his experience at PAX West. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Uh, sorry, Tech Tech. I'm, I just called your stuff boring, but, I mean, take it away. Oh, my goodness. My stuff is a real heart wrencher. Finished the office watch through for the first time. Whoa. Oh, man. I... I wish we didn't have to blow through this because there's so much to unpack there. But what, what I mean, what, what's your emotional state right now, I guess, is what, what I'll ask. I was super happy that in the and for those of you who haven't gotten to the last episode, I saw I am sorry. F- I am sorry for the spoilers, um, but I was really happy that they brought Michael Scott back in for the last episode. I literally shook my fist in the air in a fit of happiness. Um, what did you think about uh, Toby and Pam finally getting married? a fake spoiler oh i'm just i'm trying to keep people i you should have rolled with it i'm trying to make sure people aren't actually spoiled okay sorry <laughs> you can't you can't do that to me sorry um, just, I, I'll, I'll stop I, keep going i thought i blacked I, out I, for I a totally, part of it i totally do that with every star wars movie and said hey did you hear about the ewok knife fight that's i, I mean do did the you exact same thing it was a, it was crazy the ewok knife fight yeah it was so good yeah very actiony um but you're but you're doing okay tactic like you're because i i know like when i watched the finale i was like what am i going to do now 
Yeah, I feel I have I do have a feeling of emptiness, but I I thought they wrapped it up pretty well. And all in all, great show. Wish they didn't have Will Ferrell on it ever, because that just seemed <laughs> like a waste. It was an um, interesting stage for that show for sure. But ten out of ten, really good show, and I love Michael Scott. There you have it, Nerd Bomber. Um, so I haven't had a super eventful week. I'm still drowning in my backlog, unfortunately. And right now I have Astral Chain. I have the Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, game. I think I have Gears that I played a little bit of and still haven't gotten significantly far in. And now Friday Borderlands comes out and it's just, there's so much going on. So the only thing that I've done is try to save time by cooking with HelloFresh, which is not nerdy at all, but it was it was okay. I wasn't sure what to expect, and thumbs up for the first HelloFresh cooking endeavor that I've tried. Now, I just want to make one note on what you said. I feel like you glossed over the fact that there's a Yu-Gi-Oh game in your backlog. Yu-Gi-Oh is not a word that I've heard in a hot minute. That's still that's still a thing. That's still happening. That's still going. Oh on. yeah. A game just came out for the Switch, and I'm actually super excited about it, and I just haven't gotten a chance to play it yet. I'm getting really back into like the nostalgic card games, like between Pokemon TCG and Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm like all about it lately. Now, Ben, I, I heard you perked up there. Are you a Yu-Gi-Oh! man? No, but I've 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 seen I've seen that they they keep on consistently putting in, putting them out. I mean, that seems to be the big. The big thing that Konami does these days is a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. Yeah, I've I've never been a Yu-Gi-Oh man consistent. myself, but I've actually I've never yeah. been a Pokemon guy either, so I'm very much in the minority there. Um, as far as my what are you up to Wednesday, uh, I'm going to keep it short and sweet, but I do have some some big news. Um, Tactic and Nerd Bomber know about this because I've been I, I adopted a rescue dog. Uh, on a trial basis and i've had him for a couple of weeks now but we're officially past the trial point and uh i'm proud to announce that he's a keeper so the online warriors have a new mascot a new fur baby and his name is cooper and uh i'll have to see if we can get a, a picture up on one of our social media or both of our social media accounts and uh yeah we're very happy um, i'm very excited about this development we're, we're very very excited say. it's uh he's a uh, He's supposedly a male fox a male fox terrier mix but i don't see much fox terrier when i look at him personally i see more jack russell and i see more chihuahua and a little uh, bit of male a little bit of male yeah um i mean you guys I thought you were gonna say yourself. you just see love when you look at him but yeah my eyes it's like that emoji where the, the eyes are our hearts that's pretty much what my face has looked like for the past two weeks and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So I'll post a picture of my face as well and it'll look like that. Um, so yeah, that's, that pretty much sums it up for me. You know, uh, being a new dog owner is, it takes up quite a bit of time. Not that I'm complaining. Before um, we dive into the, uh, the pack stuff, Ben, has there been anything that you've been playing lately that you want to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, control. I've been playing the game control, which, uh, remedy entertainment. It, I don't know why, more people don't know about the game control. It doesn't seem to have been, um, I don't know, promoted as much as I would think a, a game of that quality would, but, uh, it flew under the radar. Pretty, yeah. Yeah. And it, it got released and, and I've been playing it. I, I bought it uh, or downloaded it to my PS4, uh, just before PAX got to play a little bit before I went to PAX. And, uh, it is very, very interesting. It's a weird kind of X Filesy sort of fringe sort of story mm -hmm. where your your character is uh, this this girl who has <clears throat> been searching for her brother and kind of uh, for a long time. There was something that happened when she was younger, and they she suspects this secret organization took him. And she arrives at this, finally, at this secret organization, and it's in lockdown. And she seems to be talking to something that's, like, you don't know what it is yet, but, like, she's talking to herself. You're only hearing her side of the conversation. And uh, then she goes into the office of the guy who used to be the director, and he had basically killed himself. 
and this whole building is overrun by this evil sort of like presence that you don't quite know about and you pick up the gun and you become the new director of this this uh the bureau of control and it just gets weirder from there and it's just so so much fun so remedy for those that don't know this is the company behind quantum break and alan wake and uh, max Payne are some of its bigger titles now control actually i had heard of it because a friend of the show um, for those that uh, date back to the Nerd Bomber podcast, which actually I don't know that anyone who regularly listens does go that go that far back, but Firestorm Five Hundred One is a friend of the show, and he recently actually messaged me and said you have to try this game. So he's oh, yeah. he's similarly similarly enamored with it. So um, yeah. I was one of the few people. I loved Quantum Break. I felt like it got a really bad rap, but I really enjoyed it. Would you say like from a lot of the trailers that I saw, I was super hype about the game because it seemed from a game mechanic wise that it borrowed a lot from both quantum break and Alan Wake. Would you say that's a fair comparison? I would say that's fair. That's definitely a fair comparison. And, uh, and also kind of exciting news that they announced uh, a remedy announced some downloadable content that's coming next year. I think they're going to be charging for two of these things. And then there's some new modes that are coming next year that are free for everyone. But one of the ones is called AWE, A-W-E, and it looks like, according to the graphic, it looks like Alan Wake, so they're going to be doing possibly a crossover huh. between Alan Wake and Control. I am so, all about that. Extremely ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently there are, I haven't found any of these things, but there are apparently Easter eggs in Control that reference the incidents that occurred um in alan wake as far as being one of these events that they investigate so they're they're, they did from what i hear they've done a lot with uh with a lot of the lore building and kind of crossing the two and it it's it's a lot of fun i just like throwing things with my mind it's so great well who doesn't like that i mean that's just that just sounds like a fun saturday right there so there yeah so um so let, let's dive into to your experience with PAX West. So I, I, I do have a few kind of interview style questions in front of me to kind of guide the discussion. But um, okay, I guess I guess the, the first question I would have is, uh, was this like your first time going to to a con of this scale and of this size? I, I don't know how much experience you have with this sort of thing. I have never been to really any con, so I don't have much experience with that sort of thing. Well, how about Tectic and Nerd Bomber? Have you guys gone to cons? We've gone to cons, but a lot of smaller ones. We've tried to go to um, New York Comic Con. Um, unfortunately, that always gets sold out, even though like I have it queued up. Somehow, I can never get tickets to it. But we've gone to a lot of smaller ones. We've gone to like Retro Game Con, which that was actually a lot of fun. Um, just a lot of like local-ish type cons. So they're fun, but I feel like it's not the same as something at this scale. Yeah, this... As far as... Um... This was my second time going to PAX, uh, PAX West, and um, it was the first time it was amazing, and I, I only stayed there, or I only went there for a day. I only go for a day because I get some social, social anxiety kind of uh, things going on with me when I'm in a big crowds of people where I don't have a direction. I kind of Same. feel really anxious, so... Yeah. Um, Don't as long as I have a game. Yeah. As long as I have a game plan and that's the thing, it's like you can get the maps beforehand and kind of plan out where you're going to go. If I, as long as I have a game plan, I'm good. But, um, but yeah, one day is enough for me and it was pretty awesome. But yeah, this is the second time I've gone and I'm definitely going to go again next year. So one of the things that, I mean, I'm sure this isn't the reason that you went to PAX West, but like, let's talk about swag. Let's talk about swag, also known as stuff we all get. Yes. Uh, what? 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 Uh, did you pick anything up over there? Yeah, I. Um, well, I bought. Um, I'm a big fan of Double Fine games, and so that was the first thing I did when I arrived there was go upstairs to the sixth floor, and go see the Double Fine um, exhibit. And they there, I got to see the game. Uh, you know, Psychonauts Two is going to be coming out next year, 
I don't know if it, have you have any of you played Psychonauts before? Oh, no, yeah. I've heard of it, but I yeah, yeah, that's more much more of a nerd bomber thing, I think. I'm okay. very excited yeah, um, about the second game. Yeah, and it uh, and they they played the first opening level. They in you know we didn't get to play it unfortunately, but it was like you waited in line for a ticket, and then you got a ticket to see um, uh, what's going on with that game and how it looks. It looks great. And then a part of that, uh, going into the swag thing, is I got a Psychonauts 2 wooden toothbrush from... Oh, from heck me. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are so you going I got to that. use it? Probably not. Probably not. Good answer. No. Um, and then also at the Double Fine booth, I bought uh, some of the... Um, uh, the patches, you got merit badges for your different psychic powers in the first game, and there were a whole bunch of mini pins, so I bought some of those. Um, I got some swag from Code Vein, which is this kind of Dark Souls-esque sort of um, post-apocalyptic vampire game, which wasn't really on my radar at all, but I waited in line and um, played a little bit of it and thought... You know, if if any game would get me into a Dark Soulsy kind of game, this probably would. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but it was very complicated, and you're like very much trying to memorize moves and dodge all the time, and a lot of dying, which I don't generally <laughs> like. Well, that's one of the fun things about these cons, right? In general, you go there for the stuff you love, but you also go there to discover stuff you might love. You know, it's all it's all about oh, yeah. discovery. So that's pretty neat that you we're able to do that. Yeah. And it's like the first thing that I, if anyone's going for the first time, the first thing I would recommend is just wander the floor. Cause there is so much there that, you know, like a lot of the indie stuff that you've never heard of, um, can be impressive. There was some stuff by, um, trying to remember there's a game called Hades that I think it's Annapurna interactive. Oh, yeah. I've actually sure been really right. looking forward to that. I want to say yeah, it's called Hades. I, yeah, Hades. And I saw the gameplay, and I was waiting in line, but it was starting to get late, and I was late for uh, a party I was going to for for the What's Good Games podcast. Um, I don't know if I can say other podcasts on this on this podcast. I, I, I think oh, we'll yeah, allow it. it. We'll confer with our legal okay. team, but I'm pretty sure that's going to be just fine. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, um, so yeah, I, I had to dodge out of that line just because it was it was a long line. But it looked really, I mean, like any of any of those other games that they make, like Transistor is amazing. Um, even Bastion, which is the first first game from them I ever played, was pretty great. So there's another game that I don't think I ever played from there from them in between Transistor and and. Is it called Pyre, I think? I think it is called Pyre. Anyway. Actually, I will say um, Supergiant is amazing at also making sure they donate to charity. Once upon a time, we actually ran extra life events in our area, and they were always super generous. And I guess this is kind of a plug for an indie studio that I have no ties to, but they were always super generous. They gave like vinyls of all of their game soundtracks and stuff. So I'm super supportive of anything they do. Um, so I, I do want, I mean, I think you already in that, uh, a lot of what you just said, you answered a couple of the other questions I had, but I guess if you, if you were able to, uh, dial in a top three favorite things you saw, I mean, it sounds like Psychonauts 2 was high on your list and did not disappoint, but oh, yeah. w w was there anything else specifically noteworthy that you wanted anyone else that you wanted to shout out? Um, yeah, I saw, um, Let's see. I saw Gary Witta. <laughs> I don't know if you know who Gary Witta oh, yeah. is. He is he awesome. Is, who is that? Yeah. Um, he is uh, basically, he used to be a PC gaming monthly guy back in the old days. He's about my age. Um, and oh, then whoa. He, he left. Wrote, wrote Rogue One? <laughs> yeah, he wrote Rogue, Rogue One. And he also uh, wrote uh, Book of Eli. Huh. Um so yeah, he's uh, he's a, a big fancy scriptwriter. He also um, I got to know who he was through um, kind of funny games daily, 
that's check with the legal department again. I will that do that. was yeah. where <laughs> I kind of discovered him as like a persona. I, I mean, I knew he had written Rogue One, but that's where I really got to know him as a personality. Yeah. And he's fantastic. I feel like he always has phenomenal just insight on everything. Yeah. And, and uh, well, then I don't know how much you know about uh, his game Space Rocks, but I got a copy of Space Rocks. So that's that was one of the cool things. Right on. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like your uh, my last question was going to be general thoughts and takeaways. It sounds like one thing you would recommend to first time con congoers like you said is kind of walking the floor and just getting a feel of the place but um yeah yeah any other like have tips for the trade that you yeah i think there there are a couple things to think about uh, you know knowing myself personally going one day that's enough for me i know my limits i know that that's that's you know i'll be okay with that and uh i'm not gonna be able to wait in line for a lot of these fancy games if you go multiple days um, I would say a good approach would be to walk the floor, figure out what games you want to play, uh, what games you want to wait in line for. Um, if you really know that this game is going to be there, you can you can go that first day really early and, and wait for tickets and stuff. But I would say take that first day to figure out you know what you're most interested in, and then on the second day, then do that whole, you know, you get an idea, figure out where you want to, you know, which games you want to play. If you want to play the new final fantasy, or if you want to play the, you know, um, any of the other new, new titles do that. So come in with a plan is basically it. And then also know that the community is there to help. I mean, it's just one of the cool things that I felt really comfortable there. Um, just with all the people, I mean, it's it. It seems like such a welcoming community. So, yeah, it was it was a uh, was a lot of fun. Well, that's great to hear, and uh, and we do appreciate you coming on and, and and talking about it, as well as talking about that news piece with us. And and um, to wrap up this second half of the show, we are going to play our usual game. And uh, actually, um, g- given the fact that, that you're here today and you're going to be participating in the game, uh, you were not uh, actually in charge of picking the topic this time. Um, obviously, so I know. You, know, you know what's going on or you don't know what the answers are. So um, actually, a fun fact, on the day that we're recording this segment of the show, um, it's actually National Chocolate Milkshake Day. So first of all, happy uh, National Chocolate Milkshake Day to all of you guys and to all of our listeners out there. Um so actually, the trivia that I have for all of you today is milkshake related. It's all milkshake questions. Um, I, I don't am know. ready. I love yeah. milkshakes. I've been on a milkshake kick lately. I is don't question, know why. Is question one, how many boys are brought to the yard? Dude, you, you <laughs> stole my joke. <laughs> oh. Wow. You know, we, we, we have a guest on the show and you steal his joke tactic. I mean, come on. Be a welcoming host. Great minds. Um, so I, I do want to note that not all of these questions are specifically chocolate milkshake related in spite of the fact that it is chocolate milkshake day. But um, we can just dive right in. I'm planning on making all of these, uh, you know, prices Right style questions. I don't know how many questions there are going to be. Probably somewhere on the order of five or so. So let's just dive right in here. Um, th- you know, this is a pretty standard question when we talk about when we have quizzes that are based around food. But um, according to the Guinness World Book of Records... Uh, in 2000, in the year 2000, Ira Freehoff uh, made the world's largest milkshake. How many gallons was that milkshake? And um, of course, we will start uh, with our guest Ben today. Ah, uh, boy. Let's go with 700 gallons. Okay, uh, Nerd Bomber, what do you have for us? All right, that seems like a big milkshake, but I'm like having issues visualizing how many like past a gallon i can't like visualize that let me let me see i'm gonna go with like a 50 gallon milkshake maybe i'm gonna okay, go with tactic. 243 okay so uh ben you have your first point uh congratulations um Woo! i will say none of you were remotely close uh guys six thousand gallons 
Six thousand gallons. Uh, it was where the did they put this milkshake? I, Although an above ground say. pool is eighteen thousand gallons for reference. Uh, you are ahead of me, first of all, tactic. Um, you're you're, you're re- referencing my next question. Um, I do want to say though, before we move on to that question, at six thousand gallons, it was equivalent to the size of fifty thousand normal size milkshakes. And I don't know what the normal size milkshake is, but. In any case, you could figure it out with math. So, like, so, did the whole town work on the same milkshake? Like, do they all just stick their straw in? So, what I have in front of me is a bullet that says, according to the Guinness World Book of Records, in 2000, Ira Freehoff made the world's largest milkshake. It was 6,000 gallons. I don't know. I don't know anything more than that. Uh, I I think that's a fair question. I think I think there's a lot more questions than answers when it comes to that. Um, but uh, Ben has has point number one. He's on the board. Uh, nerd bomber and tactic, of course, need to step it up. Um, okay, so next question: How many? And again, it says how many average-sized milkshakes would it take to fill up an Olympic-sized pool? Now, I don't know what the average-sized milkshake is in terms of like fluid ounces. You have to you have to kind of assume that for yourself. Um, but yeah, how many average-sized milkshakes uh, would it take to fill an Olympic-sized pool? And this time, we will start with nerd bomber. I'm trying to think how many gallons an Olympic sized pool is. Um, is that something that you just like you're trying to remember, like you know it, or you're just trying to No, I'm just trying out? to like logic it out because I'm thinking like if a standard outside pool for people is like maybe twenty thousand gallons, maybe you have like three of those and it's sixty thousand gallons. And man, now I have to do unit conversions from like ounces to gallons. This is too much. I'm just gonna throw a number out there. I'm gonna say five thousand. That wait, no, that doesn't make any sense. It's locked in. Five, it's locked you said, in. F- you said 5,000? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense, but it's too late. Okay. Uh, I agree with your assessment of your own answer. Tactic, what do you have for us? 300,000 milkshakes. All right. And Lord. Ben, what do you have? Uh, um, uh. 20,000. Okay, so this one goes to uh, Tectic. 3,200,000 milkshakes. I, I thought Ben was going to go 300,001 milkshakes. I thought I, I also thought he was going to go big. I, I was surprised. But uh, Tectic, you were on the board. So again, you weren't even close to the actual answer, but that's not the game we're playing here, thankfully. Um, Nerd Bomber. I wonder if there's going to. I wonder if there's going to be a, an Olympic-sized milkshake swimming pool in the Olympics this year, in Tokyo. I would Actually, watch a milkshake be like, swim. It would be really good cardio because it's it's really thick, you know. Yeah, viscosity. Yeah, you gotta go. <laughs> I think swimmers probably do that for resistance training. Um, okay, this the the next few questions. In fact, I think all the remaining questions are going to be uh, like years, like in terms of like years. Uh, so we'll say that busting quote unquote is if you go, uh, like if you go after the year. So like if the answer is 1920 and you say 1921, you busted, um, just for, to establish the bust rules. Uh, so Dairy Queen, uh, first introduced milkshakes to their menu in what year? And we'll start with tactic this time. Now, remember if you get, if you are, Sooner than their actual answer. That's busting. 1922. Okay. Let's swing it over to Ben. Uh, 1942. And Nerd Bomber. I'm going to go with 1935. All right. This one goes to Ben again. 1949, guys. Um. So you were all in the ballpark. You were all in the right century. Uh, ben was especially close. So, uh, yeah, he's he's uh, pulling away. Nerd Bomber is bringing up a hard rear. Tactics I feel like it. every time we have these games, I either know the answer almost exactly or I know none of the answers. That, you know, uh, based on my experience with, with giving these quizzes and participating in them, I feel like you're you're absolutely right about that. Um. Similar question coming next. Uh, when did Wendy's introduce the Frosty? What year? Now, you got you to think now. Was this after or before Dairy Queen? 
Uh, and this time we will start with Ben again. We've come, we've come all the way around. Um, nineteen sixty-five. Okay, uh, Nerd Bomber. All right, I was going to say something very close because I was just going to be an ass because I'm so in left field. I feel like with all of my answers, so I'm just going to do it anyway. Nineteen sixty-nine. Did you pick 69 because of like... You know, oh, absolutely. Co- yeah. Okay. Yeah. I won't say what I meant to, just in case there's younger listeners. Uh, Tactic? 1970. Oh, come on. Okay. So, well, you know what? Uh, it was 1969. So... Are you kidding? I'm not nice. kidding. That is actually... That's actually when it was. 1969. So... Uh, Way to go, Wendy's. Way to go. You no, know, I knew it was, but I couldn't pick your answer. Why would you How know did that? you know? I'm I'm lying, guys. That was it. Oh. <laughs> well, we believed you, man. Uh, I just thought you had like absurd Wendy's history knowledge. Okay, so I have two more questions in front of me, and uh, Ben has two points. Tactic has one, and Nerd Bomber has one. So, uh, Tactic Nerd Bomber, it's, it's it's do or die time here. Um, what? And this is how I'm reading this question off the internet. This is not me writing this question. What is a milkshake without a straw? That's a, that's a question. Joseph Friedman invented the flexible straw after watching his daughter struggle with her milkshake in his brother's fountain shop. When was the flexible straw patented? I have the exact date, but we can just go for the year. So, uh, Nerd Bomber, you will go first this time. I feel like I've at least always known flexible straws. So, maybe 1960. Okay. Uh, tactic. 1950. And Ben. Uh, 1955. Okay, so you guys all busted. It was 1937. Really? Yeah, 1937. Uh, so well before Dairy Queen actually introduced the milkshake onto their menu. Um, so what that means is that there's no points there. So Nerd Bomber and Tactic, you guys only have a chance to tie... Uh, Ben, you have a chance to to solo the win here, so let's let's see if you can make that happen. The last question is is very similar to the other two. Um, fast food restaurants like to make up their own names for milkshakes. McDonald's is famous for their McFlurries. McFlurries come in a variety of flavors. The most popular being Oreo, M M&M, and Butterfinger. What year were McFlurries invented in? And uh, Tactic, you will start. 1950. <laughs> you sound infinitely excited about that answer. Uh, ben. Um, I'm pretty sure that those were more recent than, than that. So I'm thinking 2000. Okay. And Nerd Bomber. All right. I'm going to go with 1980. And I also have to say, I don't think that a McFlurry is comparable to a milkshake i'm just gonna throw it out there because have you ever tried to actually like drink that through a straw it doesn't happen yeah and and mcdonald's has regular shakes right like yeah they they have like the yeah so i i would agree with that that mcflurries aren't milkshakes i would take a mcflurry over a milkshake personally well you're Um, just a crazy man then wow uh tell me how you really feel just so That's everybody just busted. Lunacy. Just give me the point. So actually, uh, uh, Ben did bust, but just barely. It was 1997. Oh. So uh, Nerd Bomber gets the point, and uh, Ben and Nerd Bomber f- finish out in a tie. And Tactic, uh, you you suck, man. You blew Thanks. it. Uh, so there you have it. Um, no sudden death. A, uh, let me see. You know what? That's a good. That's a good point. Let me see if I can find a sudden death question that would be suitable. Because we, we, yeah, we can't leave it like that, right? Uh, I don't. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Okay, this really? is an intro. I I do have one more. Uh, one more question. Um, it's a little offbeat, but I think we can make it work. Uh, milkshakes became even more popular when the blender was improved by a different inventor, Fred Waring, in 1937. Uh blah 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 a bunch of facts about electric blenders rotating blade it was known as the miracle mixer 
and it was initially sold in 1937 for how much money? And uh, going in order, we'll start with uh, we'll start with Ben. Uh, Tactic, you can play if you want, but you lose, man. Boy, what 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 was the year again? 1937. Okay. I'm going to say 1999. A, cl- a true classic. Uh, Nerd Bomber. I'm going to go with a cool 50. And I'm going to say 40. Okay, so uh, Ben, you have won, my friend. Uh, Tactic and Nerd Bomber, you both busted. 29.75 was the answer we were looking for. So how about that, folks? You can't script it any better. Uh, we have a guest on this show, and he beats both the regulars in the trivia game what else is new um so yeah uh, go out get yourself a frosty milkshake and uh enjoy it and and think about the miracle mixer while you do and um yeah we we want to thank uh all of you for listening we of course want to thank our wonderful guest ben for joining us on the show and um yeah thank you thank you guys for having me i really appreciate uh appreciate this uh this is great i had a lot of fun it has absolutely been our pleasure, and um, we're hope- we hope to do it again soon. And um, yeah, we thank you all for listening. If you like what you hear, you can head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a review, or you can hit hit us up on Twitter uh, at Online Warriors One, at OW Legal Eighty Six, at OW Tactic, and at OW Nerd Bomber. And um, we'll talk at you again next week. Have a great week.